Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. My name is Darlene, I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps, and I started this channel a while ago to help fellow creators create, and I go over recipes and formulas and how to create things and hopes to help you fellow creators learn to create or help with any questions to help you create recipes that you're looking for. Now, today's recipe is going to be on my hot processed bubble bath. I did a cold processed bubble bath last week. A lot of my viewers and subscribers are having trouble finding one of the ingredients. So I'm going to go over how I do my hot processed bubble bath because it doesn't use that ingredient. These are ingredients that you should easily find, hopefully no matter where you are. Um, so I thought that I would get this recipe up and posted for you guys so that um, you guys can still make bubble bath and use it in place of that other recipe I had. All right, so this is the hot process version. Now, for the bubble bath, the hot process version, I make this one because I like to use it in my bubbling salts, things like that. It's a little bit more sturdy. It holds up really well. Um, and, and it's pretty simple and easy to put together. All right, so in this recipe, I won't be putting fragrance or color in it because I will be using this as an addition to some of my other products that I make, but you could absolutely um, put a fragrance or color in this and make it however you want. And I'll go over that throughout the recipe. So just a quick update on things. Um, things are progressing, um, hopefully within, <sighs> I'm hoping within two to three weeks I will have a soap room again, a soap studio. So that's really exciting. Um, we have purchased the drywall, that kind of stuff. So that's where we are with that. Um, I officially have my shampoo and conditioner bars in a vendor market in Oshawa, Ontario now. They have received the parcel. It is available in their store. So that is amazing. It is called the Rusty Spur Vendors Market. Um, and they've reached out to me and I have made and shipped them the shampoo and conditioner bars. So that is a step forward as well. Okay, so that's where things are kind of standing. Um, I hope you're enjoying these videos. If there's anything that you guys are looking for, specifically videos like certain recipes or um, videos on ingredients, things like that, I know that we have um, the videos on the preservatives and that's a really deep discussion and I'm trying to figure it out how to do it without being an hour long video to go over that. So I am working on that guys um, to come out with more information on your preservatives. And then um, I will be, I did put a vote out um, whether people wanted to see me remake the video for the whipped soap base. Um, that I had previously done now that I have better equipment and things like that um, And I've kind of upgraded and learned a lot about YouTube. I am going to remake that video The vote was definitely a video to redo so that is coming soon as well um, And as far as the whip soap base goes guys I actually have a couple ways that we can make the whip soap base so look forward to those videos coming All right, meanwhile, let's get into this and let's make our hot processed bubble bath okay guys so I've got my hair up I have my gloves on and I have a mask here because we are using some very airborne um, surfactants for this I have a little double boiler system a little bit of water in the pot I have a heat proof um, bowl here okay so this is a pretty straightforward easy recipe um, the inside this bowl, as you guys can see, so in this where I'm going to melt everything down, um, I have my distilled water. So for my distilled water, you guys, I have 235 grams. I'm making a 500 gram batch of this. If you were going to make this to sell, you would make a much larger batch uh, to fill your containers and bubble bath. But I'm just making a 500 gram batch and I have 235 grams of distilled water in here. Now, into here we are going to add our surfactant. So the surfactant, the main surfactant that we're going to use is going to be um, the sodium cocal sulfate um, powder. 
okay? You can use the noodles if you want. They just take a little longer to break down and melt. Um, or you can just put them in and kind of crush them up before you put them in. But this is just the powder form. And I've got 100 grams of the sodium cocal sulfate powder. This is very airborne, so I suggest wearing a mask, being very careful when you're putting it in here so you don't get as many particles airborne as possible. But we are going to put that in there. Okay? So that is our main surfactant. Now we have our co-surfactants, um, which help keep this product um, stable. So it helps thicken it and helps stabilize it and gives it that secondary um, surfactant. So the first secondary surfactant that I'm going to add is going to be the coco betaine. Okay, and I have 100 grams of the coco betaine that I am going to add into here. Okay, and then the other surfactant that I'm going to use as my secondary surfactant, which is really going to help thicken this up, um, is going to be the dicoglucoside. Okay, so the dicoglucoside, we are using 50 grams. And we just mix all of this together, guys. Try and get it all out. So I'm just going to slightly stir this, start getting that powder mixed into there. Once you have the powder mixed into here, you no longer have airborne particles, you don't need to be um, having a, a mask on. So the last thing that I'm going to add into here, okay, for the heat up part of this, is going to be some glycerin. Now the glycerin um, is a humectant, it's going to bring moisture to the skin um, in the bathtub, that type of stuff, but it's also going to help with the clarity of this product. Okay, so let's get that in there. And I have 15 grams of the vegetable glycerin that I'm adding in here. Give that a stir. And now I'm going to heat this up until this is all melted and broke down. Okay. So once I get this to that point, I'll bring you guys back. Okay guys, so because I used the powder, it took maybe 10 minutes to get this all melted down to the point where when I pull it out, all I see is the air bubbles. I'm not seeing any powder or anything else left in there. That's all you're looking for. If you use the noodles, just take a look at it. Do you see any more noodles in there or anything? As long as it's all blended so you're not seeing particles that's all you want now this looks very opaque right now but the reason that it looks opaque is just like the last time um it's the bubbles in this that are making that opaque all right so now what i want to do is i want to allow this to cool so it goes translucent this will go clear all right so we're going to leave this sit for a couple hours 
and then I will bring you back and I will show you how I finish this off. Okay guys, so I got busy doing a few other things and uh, this is completely cooled and it has completely gone clear as you can see. Okay, it is a clear liquid. Um, I did walk away from this and allow it to, to cool. Um, one thing that I will show you, as you can see here, this part here, so this is, it gets a, because it was on top, a little bit of a jelly top if the air gets exposed to it. So when I do store this, I do keep it in an airtight container. Um, but that will just stir right back in, you guys. It will just soften back up once you put it back in, so it's not a big deal. Um, as I said, I didn't color this. If I was going to color this, I would have done it while it was still warm. Okay, and just color using a skin safe um, colorant. But you can see this has gone nice and clear. Okay, there's just the little film in there that will stir in. It's just because I let air get to the top, but it does break down and soften up inside there. Okay, so you can see this is a pretty easy product to make. You warm it up. If you guys let it cool and it's not clear like this you just didn't cook it long enough and break down um, the dry surfactant enough so just cook it again just in case that happens to you guys um, just cook it a little bit longer and it will go clear but as you can see this is a beautiful thick consistency bubble bath just like bubble bath should be I find that this recipe works the best for my bubbling salts and stuff um, and if you're going to put fragrance in here, you guys, I would put my fragrance in um, once it cooled down below the temperature that we needed it to, um, or once it was completely cool. You'll have to stir quite a bit to get it in once it gets thickened. When it's warm, it's still quite um, thin. And then once it becomes viscous like this, you got to work a little harder to stir that fragrance oil in. And if you're going to use a fragrance oil, being a bubble bath, um, I only use 2%. So in this batch here, for instance, I would only use 10 grams of my fragrance oil to fragrance this. Okay, so that gives you the fragrance load. So I'm not putting fragrance in this and I am not putting um, colorant in this because I will use this for multiple different products. I will store this in an airtight container and use it for different things. But you could use it just like this for bubble bath with colorant and fragrance in it. The only thing else we need to add is going to be our preservative. Okay. And in this I am going to use a Germal Plus and I am going to use in this small batch in a 500 gram batch I am going to use 2.5 grams of the Germal Plus. So we're going to get that in there. And then just make sure that you stir that in really well. It's way below the temperature that I need it at for the preservative. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see that little bubbles coming off of it. It's got bubbles floating up in the air from stirring it. And if you guys get air bubbles in it like this, um, it, those air bubbles will just come to the surface. If I was packaging it and I got air bubbles in it, I would simply just take some alcohol, spray it on top of the bottle when the bottles, bubbles came to the top, and it will deflate all those bubbles as you can see. Okay, but that is how you're going to get your crystal clear bubble bath. So that is another way you guys can make the bubble bath if you can't get the ingredients from the cold process one. This is a hot process one and these ingredients are more available to you guys. So if you have any further questions, please just ask them in the comments below. Um, but this is a pretty straightforward recipe and I hope that it helps the ones that were struggling to find the ingredients for the cold process. Alright, have a great day.